Hello, and welcome to Silicon Valley Girls Chat Over Tea. I'm Gloria. And I'm Rosetta. And in the spirit of consciousness, this is a new year, 2023. And this year we want to be more conscious and more focused of our actions and our words to always be kind, loving, and compassionate to one another. Yes, we do. And we've been saying it for a very long time now. <laughs> so if you are a supporting customer, customer, a supporting support, I meant to say, yes. then you'll know. But thank you so much for tuning in yes. to our weekly chats. We really, really appreciate our supporters and our fans. Yes. And anyone new out there, hi. <laughs> Hello, we'd like to wish, yes. say thank you very much for tuning in. Yes. And uh, again, wishing everyone a happy new year. Happy 2023. Yeah, we're going to keep saying that because we're happy it is a new year. year. Yes. Even though Mars is in retrograde right now. So if weird things are happening in your life, just realize that that'll be gone in a little bit. Almost over. Yes, yes, yes. And... I want to remind you before we get going, you know the drill for you returning fans. We would love if you could hit that icon, thumb icon, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of our chats. Yay, yay, yay. We're so happy. And as we're Silicon Valley Girls Chat over tea, we always talk about the tea that we're drinking for the day. So yes. Gloria, what tea are we drinking today? Okay. Ta-da. Today we're drinking Tazo Chai. It's an organic spiced black tea. It's a rich blend of teas and spices, and it is a combination of black teas, ginger root, cinnamon bark, black pepper, cardamom seed, cloves, and star anise seeds. Everything is organically grown. Yes, love it. We love the spice. And when we, we always like to let you know, before we dunk it in our water, we like to smell the tea bag. Yes. And we could smell the different flavors. It yes. was amazing. Instantly. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, that's ginger. And, and just as your mind is going ginger, the next one comes in. Cinnamon. And then Whoa. you can smell the star anise because it's a very licorice taste. The sour anise uh, tastes and smells like licorice. Yes. And you so, can, uh, that, that all together <laughs> is, you know, that's what brings the spices together. Yes. So we've had it seeping. And then I'm excited to try this because it's our first time yes. having this tea. And I'm looking at this little uh, tag at the back because there are some tags that have like sayings or phrases or words. But yeah, And I'm sure it does because there's, there's, there's information. There's something on it, but I yeah. can't read it. It's way too uh, tiny. <laughs> tiny, and it's very cursive. Yes. But uh, let's smell it. Mm, smells good. Let's dunk it in a bit more. Yes. I had to wake it up a little bit. Oh yeah. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. I hope you're drinking with us. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Okay. What is my verdict? So I'm going to tell you, it smelled very, very good in the packet. Yes. Very strong of the spices. But when I'm drinking it, Mild. I don't get as much of those spices. I want it to jump out at me. Not too much, huh? No, it's Very mild. mild. I mean, in my, see, my tea is dark. It's dark, very dark. So... Maybe with all this organic, they just didn't want to overdo it because it's very mild. Don't know. Yeah. But I'd like it to be a bit more flavorful than it is. A little bit more of a punch. Yeah. That's too bad, but it's okay anyway. It's still we'll good. Still, we'll still drink it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we always start off by sending our thoughts and prayers to the human race. Um, we have lots of things going on in the world. We just want to be as conscious as possible. So let's make peace and not war. Yay, that's why we have this. We've yes. had it for a while. It says peace on here, yes. peace spell. Yes. All year long. Yes, so let's do that. So you were telling me, Rosetta, that they finally made some progress in the Idaho um, shooting or stabbing 
Um, the murders, the yes, murders of yes, those, of those college students. I'm sure you all heard about this because this happened like when November time, mm -hmm. yeah, and it took a long. It's very unusual that they don't have a suspect um, within the the following week or so, and this one took a long time for them yeah. to actually it took months. Yeah, it took it took a while for them to actually, and no one knew, right? right. We were all up in the air saying, "Well, we want some more updates," right. and now we have some updates. So this particular suspect, his name is Brian Koberger. He's a suspect. And the update is that um, prior to the murders, the Federals had been observing him in Pennsylvania. Right. And um, it occurred around 4 a.m. in the morning. And what happened was he threw some trash in his neighbor's bin before his arrest and the trash was key to the case yes because the trash had um they collected had the father's dna from the trash outside the family's home matching it to the dna discovered on the um the button of the knife uh what is it called when you have a pouch for the knife uh the knife sheath that's what it's oh, called okay the knife sheath yes on the bed next to the body of madison Megan, Madison Mogan. Is that how you pronounce that? Madison Mogan. Yeah. So the DNA matched on that button that was on the outside of that sheath. So that's how they connected him. And um, the victims, they say, were killed between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. And this is really weird because when it first came out that these these murders had occurred, they were saying that four people were murdered, two best friends, and then on the third floor, because this was a, a tri-level house. Right. So two best friends on the middle level, and then on the third floor, there was a boyfriend and girlfriend that both got murdered. But they found out that on the base, the basement, I think it's called the basement here, but... Well, the entry level. The, the entry level there was two other girls right. and they were sleeping and they nothing happened to them. Right. They, not, they weren't touched or anything, but we come to find out that one of the girls from yes. that bedroom, she actually, at the time of the murders, she actually told the police that she witnessed the intruder right. walking towards her and right. then he turned away and walked through the glass door, the sliding glass doors. And she noticed that um, the only thing she saw was that he had bushy eyebrows because he had a mask on and right. really couldn't see much. Right. But what happened was that was enough to scare her that she ran back into her room and, and locked hid. the door yes. and hid, which was surprising because she did. I mean, I guess I could understand why she did that because she, you're she, never too well, careful, you, right? You, know, you think, oh my God, he's going to kill me too. Right. So you have to lock yourself in and make sure yeah, why 100 in our house right you know? right and you never know if that person could be faking her out and walking right. through the glass doors but then turn around and come back mm -hmm. so she hid until the next morning when she woke up and they said that um the next morning she called friends over and she realized that one of the people she wasn't sure if she just passed out and just they couldn't wake her up which is why she called her friends but they're saying that she didn't call 911 till noon the next day. Right. So it was all that time she had, and they never called until noon the next day. And um, right now, Brian is scheduled to appear in court tomorrow right. morning. They have to be arraigned. Right. So we'll hear more. I'm sure they're going to... I'm thinking they might like air the the um the court whatever well, it's if called it's just, hearings. you know they you you go in and they say your name is this and you are being charged with this how do you plead if he says not guilty sometimes they don't cover it because it's right. like 10 seconds and you know do you plead what's your plead he gives the plead the judge sets a date and they take him back to jail right so, so they may not show they may show it i'd like to see if they do show i'd like to yeah. watch it but the one question that I'm interested in finding out, and so is everyone else, is what is the connection between this Brian Koberger and these people that he killed? Right. They're still not sure what the connection is. We don't know. So we have to find out. Right. And there's more to come. If you know more, please comment below. Yes. What do you think? Um, it's pretty scary because we live in California here in the Bay Area, 
it's like houses and people everywhere. But outside Idaho, where they were killed right. in their little apartment, it's small community. It's small community, but it seemed like it's very rural. There was yeah. there was like lots of trees and open yeah. land, and it just to it me wasn't like you know house next to house right. next to house. There's space. Right, right. So, to me, I think. I'm not used to that. And I would think, gosh, that's kind of an unusual place to live. But for them living there, it was quite normal yeah. to live in a place that was like kind of secluded from everyone else. But yeah, we will wait and see yes. what happens tomorrow morning. We will stay on top of it because we got lots to cover and lots to see. Okay. So I think we all know who Gwen Stefani is you know she has a beautiful voice there's a little bit of controversy going on with Gwen right now yes there is Gwen I love Gwen she yes. is, she's an amazing singer and she has there is some controversy around her because um, she was interviewed by Allure magazine and they were talking about you know her past and her present and back in the days if you guys are a fan of her, you'll know that song, Holler Back song. Right. So, Ain't too proud to holler back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Holler, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we well, can't really sing it, but uh, you yeah, remember. You only, we only give you a little bit because we're not going to pay for singing it. So, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, in that video, she had some girls as her backup dancers, and they were representing and dressed as Hachu, they're called Harajuku girls. Now, you're wondering what the heck is Harajuku girls? But if you know, they are Japanese girls. It's a kind of like a style, a fashion, Harajuku style of these girls that dress up and they look like dolls, right? Right. With the rosy cheeks and then they have the short skirts and yes. the long socks. Yes, and the socks are like thigh high, I mean, long socks. As a matter of fact, Tyra Banks, when they went to Thailand, they had the Americans Next Top Model dress and in that fashion and that oh, style. Oh, really? Oh, did yeah. Not know and that. they did a runway uh, with them doing it. And right, right. It was it was really what they did is they they dropped them in town and they had to go around and drop and pick up all the components to make up their own look. Oh, wow! And they had to do their own makeup wow. and everything. There's in Japan. There is a huge following of yeah. girl women there that really go all out. They have all these costumes and it's a huge thing. And they actually go on, they actually have their own YouTube channel, web channel where they actually um, are streaming live and people actually right. pay them wow. to see them doing that. But the whole controversy about Gwen Stefani, she loves that culture and she had these women and they're now discussing, is it in appropriation? Right. Because they're saying that why is, um, there's a difference between being a fan and loving it where you're just showing people you love it. Right. But is she doing it because she had the girls in her video? Is she having some monetary gain from this? Even her perfume line is Hara, is called Harajuku Lovers. This is how much she loves that culture and right. the style. And you can imagine her right. because she used to, back in the days in the 90s, really dress like that. Yeah. And I never really connected it. Right. But there's this whole controversy. And I want to know, what do you think? Yes. Do you think it's uh, in appropriation? Yeah. And there's some professionals that came on and said that's the difference is, are you just doing it for fun? You're a fan right. person or are you doing it for monetary gains? And I'm sure it's monetary gains as well. So, you know, it's sort of like a two-edged sword. It is for monetary gains because I guarantee you she hired the young ladies to work to be her backup dancers, okay? So she's paying them. I think what people are trying to figure out is are they being properly compensated for not just the dance but their fashion and their style right you know or is she monetizing their fashion and their style to make her that's music sound the thing more? exactly yeah. that's what they're saying yeah. she is getting some monetary gain so there's this whole controversy about Gwen and I'm just like Leave her alone. That's yeah. what I think. I mean, yeah. that was back in the days and she loves it. So what do you think? Comment below if you have yes. any feedback on that subject. Yes, let us know what you're thinking. So um, last night was the 80th Golden Globe Awards. Remember last year they didn't televise it because the <laughs> there was a controversy that it was just too... The uh, foreign press uh, was just too... 
white. I can't think of another word to say it. It didn't have uh, any or very little diversity at all. So that's what they were trying to fix this year. So the host was black. Um, and I didn't even know the Golden Globes were on yesterday night, which is yeah. Tuesday night, because it's usually on a Sunday on night. On a Sunday, always. So yeah. they did, and, and it's either Sunday or Monday or like maybe Friday or Saturday. So it's never it's, a Tuesday. Yeah. So a lot of people missed it. Uh, Angela Bassett won for actress in a supporting role. Yay to Angela. She was yes. amazing. Black Panther. Panther. Wakanda forever. Black Panther. Wakanda forever. Uh, Tyler James Williams won for best supporting actor uh, in a TV series for uh, Abbott Elementary. Quinta Bronson, creator, producer, director of Abbott Elementary, also won uh, for Best Actress in a Television Series, Musical, or Comedy. Um, Michelle Yost. Okay, I love... Okay, I like... Uh, I guess you could say Crazy Rich Asians. My husband loves Crazy Rich Asians. And there was another movie she was in a long Crouching time ago. Crouching Tiger, Hidden there you Dragon. Go. Okay, so she's been around. She won for an actress in a motion picture, musical, or comedy for everything, everywhere, all at once. That was an amazing movie, amazing. She said that she has been waiting to hit that stage for 40 years, over 40 years. I mean, she looked beautiful, her hair, I don't know if it was extensions or her hair, It. Um, she's lighting the color. I mean, I, I think she said she was 60. Yeah, she did. She's 60 years yeah, old. She, she so she's amazing. probably been, been doing this for 50 years. She looked amazing. Beautiful, beautiful dress. So I was so happy and proud for her. And I know they're filming Crazy Rich Asians, you know, part two. So I can't wait to see that. Uh, Austin Butler was, um, he's the young man that transformed himself into Elvis. He won. Yes, that, that was, was a and great even movie. during you know you know he goes I'd like to think Denzel Washington he still sounds like Elvis yeah. I don't think he will be able to back out of that for a while I mean some of it is just his own natural he was very grateful very a lot well, of well that's gratitude. probably why he was so good at portraying Elvis yes. because his normal personality it's, is yes. just his the way his nuances and everything yeah. and the way he speaks is very similar his hair is in normal life is blonde so he blonde his hair back so he did not you know he didn't have the dark hair and he wasn't going thank you very much or anything <laughs> like that but oh I completely agree I thought he should have won um Julia Garner won for Best Supporting Actress in a Television Series for Ozar. Uh, I, I haven't seen Ozar. Ozar, yeah. I wasn't. I know it, and I know of it, and I saw a few episodes. I'm not, that wasn't my thing. Yeah. Ryan Murphy received the Carol Burnett Award, and, you know, you hear his name, but he, not only has he done films, he had... He requested his reward be given to him by Billy Porter. And then uh, he told Billy Porter, and he goes, remember that outfit, that black tux tuxedo dress? That's what I want you to wear. Oh, and yes. he And he told him, and Billy, he's like, it's in a museum, darling. I can't. <laughs> so he made a beautiful, rich fuchsia version of wow. that that he wore. I mean, all the girls looked good. But Billy looked better. Sorry. Sorry, girls. All the girls look good. I mean, they're they're everybody was crystal embellished and Billy stole the show. Wow. That was beautiful. But what Ryan did is he talked about the LGBTQ community, which he is a member of, which I didn't know. So he helped Billy Porter get the role in Pose. Oh, really? Uh, so MJ... Uh, she won the award, but it was canceled last year. So he made everybody in the audience stand up and give her her accolades oh, in person. Nice. Then he went around the room and he picked out other LGBTQ members like Niecy Nash. And he talked about the fact that, you know, where would you see a woman um, that's, in a, that's married to another woman uh, on the stage as a presenter? Right. That never would have happened before. So... He, he got a little emotional, and a lot of us got a little emotional because that's what we want in life. We want everyone to just be based off of their own talent. Don't worry about the color. Don't worry about their sexual preference. Get out from underneath their clothes. 
And that's kind of what he said. So that was really beautiful. Um, Eddie Murphy uh, received a Lifetime Achievement Award also for all of his work. And they went through and they showed, you know, like Dream Girls. And, yeah, finally. Yes. After uh, how many decades? Uh, uh, he said he had been doing this for, I think he said, like 43 years. And, you know, it's sad that he had to wait for, you know, a Lifetime Achievement Award instead of just getting Oscars and, and you know, Grammys because he's also right. a singer-performer. Right. So lots of things like that. So Eddie was like, woohoo! Uh, and then all of a sudden they had said, you know, we have a, a special guest. It was the president of Ukraine. Oh, wow. And he wanted to thank people for keeping Ukraine on their minds, uh, for keeping freedom foremost. And he said, we will, you know, he goes, have no fear. We will take our country back from Russia. And we will, as long as we have breath, we will not stop. And then it faded to black. I was like, ooh. Very nice. Um, Steven Spielberg won for director of a motion picture, finally. Um, and then Zendaya won for that Utopia. Oh, again? Again. Second time? I she, have not seen that Utopia. I, I started trying to watch it, and I mean, I know Zendaya's a cute little girl. Oh, my God, she can act because she's rough in this movie, or I guess you could call it a mini series, but... I think I'm going to binge it and, and check it out because she's consistently winning. So I thought that was really, really beautiful. So if you saw the award, what was your favorite part? Was there anything uh, like when Eddie Murphy said, he goes in, in closing, you know, I only have one thing to say. Keep Will Smith's wife's name out of your effing mouth. The place, it, oh my the God. place just erupted. But throughout the night, there were little. I will zingers. be watching it tonight because I know that my husband rec probably recorded it. Yes, he always the, records the, it. They're little zingers, and so we'll give you her view next week of those zingers. One more thing. Yes, I'm very upset. Yes. We both are. Yes, the loss of the winner, Rihanna. The song of the Lift. year. What's it called? Now I, now I forget, Lift Me Up. I'm Lift so upset, I forgot the name. Lift it Me is, Up. I mean, every time I hear that song, I mean, when I was in the movie, you know, some people, as soon as the, the you know. The credits they, come they, up. The, the, the first credit yes. come, they, they, some, like me, I'm the person going, oh my God, everybody else is leaving. We, st I, 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 when I went to see it, everybody stayed to yes. listen to through the, the whole, whole song. song. It is beautiful, Oh my Rihanna. God, it's amazing. It is beautiful. Amazing. And I said to Gloria, she better win. She has to win. Yeah. And I'm very upset that she didn't win. Yes. She won to some person. I don't know what the yeah. name is, but uh, Gloria said, I've never heard no. of the movie. What was it? R, 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 R or yeah. something. And I'd I'm never like, heard of it. Yes. I, I hadn't heard of the movie and I had not had the opportunity to know a whole lot about the, the writer creator, but they play a little bit of the jingle of the songs as right. they're in, and Rihanna, as we all lovingly call her, Riri makes you feel. I mean, it's very her, eerie, her song, and yes. I like it because it just brings you, every time I listen to it, yeah. I get that sense I'm right back in the movie, yes. right in the movie. And even though she didn't win, I wish she had, and I hope she does win the yes. Oscar. Yes. She better win the Oscar yes. for this. She looked amazing. Yes. I did see pictures of her. She looked yes. very, very yes. Everyone she looked beautiful. Looked beautiful. Even the, the host, and I'm sorry, I, I can't remember his name now. He wore a pink suit. He wore a white suit. He wore this um, sort of African embellished uh, bejewel. I mean, he looked fabulous. I His humor was just a little off for me, you know, because he kept telling everybody to sit down and shut up. Have you never seen him before, this I host? Have, no. Okay. Well, I'm watching it, so I will see it yes. next week. I so can, next week we'll, we'll, yes, we'll do we'll a little, do a little quick thing about what I thought of it. <laughs> yes, I love it. So, Mega Millions, no matter where you live, um, we all used to have our own little lotteries, and then they decided to combine 45 states together. So, because I always wondered, how did we go from big lotteries of $25 right. million dollars to the, you know, it's slated the next round will be $1.4 billion. Billion. With this a B. With B. With a I'm B. like shocked. You know what I was thinking? I think we discussed this before. As hard it is to get six numbers, if yeah. you get like 
for? Why don't they give them something mm -hmm. quite big, substantial, yeah. instead of these piddly whatever they get? And, and the thing is, and if you're being honest, if you're being honest with yourself, wouldn't you prefer to win like $25 million than $1.4 billion? Because what they did is they said, if you cash out, you get half. If you, um, if you take payments, so say it's 1.4 billion, so that's like 700, let's say 700 million, then Uncle Sam takes his off the top. Right. So swoosh. What? So that's going to be like another third. So now you've gone from 700 to maybe 499, you know, 490. So 490 million, and that's that. Well, wherever you stay, they gonna want some too. So you file your state income tax the first year. You're gonna go into panic. On top of that, everybody you've ever met in your life is gonna come a calling. They're gonna all come out the woodwork. Yes. Well, I'm your second cousin on your daddy's mama side. My daddy's uh, mama side, yeah. really. So my thing is that I just think there should be a cap. I don't think it should ever, ever, ever hit a billion dollars. I think that we could do more with lesser amounts. If you took that $1.4 billion and say you spread that over a thousand people, through time we can start changing lives. We can eradicate homelessness. We could eradicate, you know, starving people. We could feed everybody. We could have better quality shelters. And the reason we started the lottery was, was for, for the our schools. Kids. Was to give and, back to the schools. Yes, and it's not. I teachers. don't even see that really being a big of an asset to the schools because I've never heard like the teachers oh, wow, are still they're to... still pulling out of their own oh, savings. Yes. Or their own salaries to make up for what the lack of the district is yeah. offering them. Yeah. So I don't know if you play, if you don't. They also uh, said something like, the odds of you winning the $1.4 billion is like 300, and 300 plus million to one, you know? However, if you, okay, like the mega number, the red number, if you get that number, you can win some money, like $5, $10. Oh. I think that should be a million dollars. Any number that you get where you could win, it should be beneficial. You should win something. Right, right. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't played in, I, I don't even, I remember playing the lotto. That's as much as I played. I never right. played this mega millions. I don't even know, right. but I, I, I don't know. I, I keep thinking, shall I play it? Shall I not play it? I haven't right. really well, it's really easy. Yeah. All you do is you walk into, and like one of the things that they did say is the, the lottery mechanism is helping communities because people are going into establishments to buy a lottery ticket right. and they're like, oh, well, while I'm here, I need this or I need that. Right. You know, because they are in like convenience stores, uh, liquor stores. We have a place out here called 7 Eleven, it's in all the 7 Elevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, smoke shops that came up recently, which you can get the, um, what do you call that stuff, cannabis, um, you know, so you can legally buy cannabis, marijuana, whatever you call it. They also sell lottery tickets. So it's to, you know, increase the traffic. And most people win by doing quick picks. Yes. Because I remember back in the while, day, you used to play your own I used to number. play my own numbers over and over, and that never yeah. worked. Yeah. But then one time, there was a time where someone was playing their numbers over and, and over again, win. and they did win. So I yeah. was thinking I would do that, but there's more high chance that you would win with doing quick picks. Yes. So, what is your thoughts about the lottery? Do you think it's increasing the quality of life of your people? You know, uh, last month, somebody won over $2 billion. And the ticket was sold in a little bitty town where everybody knows everybody. Whoever won, they're going to have to move. That's for sure. They're, they can't stay there. And then, you know, your life's at risk because people are like, well, you won. I didn't win. I won't, I'm going to take it. And or, they like, would, or there would be this thing looming over your head, like everyone is expecting you to do amazing things, yes. help the community in one yes, form or another. another. What are you going to do for our school now? What are you yes. going to do for our library? What are you yes. going to do for our city? This and that. Yes. And the list goes on and on. And on and on. And 
there's this, this big, huge cloud over your head because you want to make a difference in the world. However, what if you can't? And then you have to think about the security of your life and your oh, family's wow. life. Yeah. You know, because we got crazy people who are like, you got 10 cents. I want your 10 cents. I'm going to take your husband or your child until you give me that 10 cents. So, and California, please, please hear us. I think it's deplorable that you have to show your face in, in our in Yeah, our state. I don't think that's right. I think I'm that's really disgusting. Dumb. If I don't want to show my face, you shouldn't mandate. And if you mandate that I show my face, then it's your responsibility to keep me safe. Think about exactly. that. Exactly. Yes. I 100% agree. 100%. Yes. So that's our lottery update. Hopefully by next week, someone will have won. And it would be so good if a thousand people won. I would be so happy versus one person. Yeah. That's just, that's a lot of responsibility. So last week, uh, after there was enough, I guess you could say enough Republicans and, and, you know, the Republicans and Democrats, all of the roles had been solidified. So now it's time to elect a Speaker of the House. Well, Kevin McCarthy, that was going to be his job. He actually moved into the office before the voting concluded. So they did the first round, and that the lady, she hit the gavel and she says, we do not have a speaker. Second one, we do not have a speaker. Fifth one, we do not have a speaker. Tenth one, we do not have a speaker. And every time they did not get a speaker, there were concessions from Kevin McCarthy to the the people, the senators of the House, oh, I will, I, I will concede on this. They made him agree that if one person doesn't like what he's doing, they can call for him to be removed as Speaker of the House. I don't think people understand too much is given, much is expected. When you are to be in office to work for the people, that should be your focus. You shouldn't be worrying about you know, like right now, they're going to be doing investigations of the past, making sure that the Justice Department didn't do anything that they don't like or they don't like the way it was done. Uh, they want to dismantle the January 6th committee, all that information, everything that was, you know, has been arrived at. Um, Kevin McCarthy, if he continues on the path he's at right now, a lot of people think it's going to be the shortest speaker of the house in history. Yeah, you're probably right. Because nobody wants, nobody wants this. And you, you know, as speaker of the house, you shouldn't allow anyone to hold you hostage. You should tell them, you know, I understand you might feel like, okay, I have to be nice to get the job. But once you get the job, you should do the job and not start playing the well party we know too. we know of another person that promised a lot before he got the job and when yeah. he got the job a different story absolutely just i'm gonna do what i want to do so now on uh, right after this happens so he gets confirmed so then he starts because they can't do nothing until they have a speaker uh in charge so he gets his little gavel in and he starts doing business so there is a person, his name is George Santos. I want you to hear me clearly. George Santos. Santos. He lied about his education. He lied about his... Um, where he worked. Well, not oh, where he worked, which companies he ever worked for. He lied about his compensation of how much money that he's made. And one of the biggest lies is that he received $700,000 in contribution. Now everybody wants to know where that money come from. Yeah, where did it come from? So a person comes out and they say, well, what he did is he had someone call around to contributors uh, pretending to be uh, a member of Kevin McCarthy's staff saying that he endorsed George. What? And would they help with campaign contributions? And now, I mean, he's sitting up there and he's like, I'm not, I'm not resigning. I'm, you don't have to resign. You should be fired. You should be sent home so fast. That's what I don't understand. When you, know, when you have people in office and they start behaving badly, pre-President 45, 
they would have been sent home. Their, their behavior would never have been tolerated. And it's like all of a sudden now, we're just letting bad things happen. He's like one lie after another. He doesn't yes. know. And the, the bad thing is that every time people call him out on his lies, he's backpedaling. Yes. The fact that he said he was Jewish, and oh. then he says, I did not say I was Jewish. I'm Jewish. Yes. Which means I'm fond of Jews. <laughs> fond. <laughs> And that's another thing. The Jewish community has got to be just mortified that this man played them like he did. Yeah, because he says, I'm Jew-ish, but I, my religion is I'm Catholic. Yes. So, so he is just the biggest liar on planet Earth. And, you know, the thing that the, we need you, Republicans. We need the Republican Party to come back to the planet. We need you to get your head out of the sky. We need you to quit trying to say, I am going to make so much money while I'm in office and go back to what the job is for. It is to be of service to the American people. If you, if you do your job and you do it well, when you get out of it, you can go off and write a memoir and make millions and millions of dollars. But please stop acting this way because you are going, let me tell you something, the Gen X, the young babies, they're not going to tolerate this crap. They will vote your butt out because they don't care. They think you're all too old as it is. If you keep acting like this, they are going to vote you out and send you home. We do a votes again in two years. And you're all sitting up here thinking, we're in charge, we're in charge, we're in charge. But will you stay in charge? We'll see. More to come. More to come. So after that... There's lots of controversy out there about the new abortion pill. So there's, it, it, can it be dispersed outside of the state that you're in or can you only get it in states that allow the legal distribution of birth control? Right. There's, there's, whole, there's a whole lot of things. Yeah, going on. now there's the FDA's allowing um, retail pharmacies to actually fulfill prescriptions for abortion pills and they can be um, done within the first 10 to 11 weeks mm -hmm. and this means that because they can do that they're allowed to be shipped now right so for states that are not allowing you can actually get someone you know living in another state to send it to you so they're actually, uh, this brings a whole nother ball game into this whole, this uh, Roe versus Wade, they, they took it away and then now we're going to, I don't know, this, it's, it's very, very, it's going to be a whole issue right. with this whole thing allowing pharmacies to do this. You'd have to have a prescription, mind you. Right. Have to, but then there are, pe there are doctors that will write you prescriptions right, right. for this. So, but then the doctors can be fined and yes. put in jail yes. for prescribing the okay, the way they're doing it is prescribing anything that endangers the life of a child. Irres irregardless of the mom, it's the life of the child. And I love how most women are coming around and they're like, okay, so you believe in pro life, however, if you force me to have this baby. Uh, because I don't want it, can't afford it, whatever. Right. What are you going to do to help me take to care of it? To help me take care of and it so I'm not nothing. on welfare. And there's nothing. There's so many children in the system that the government kind of turns its back on. And it's it's flooded with with children in the system, in the foster care system. Yes. And there's so many children that aren't able to be adopted or fostered out that they actually age out of the foster care yes. system. And where do they go after that? Yeah. They're left to, because they're 18, now they're adults. Yeah. So they're and, left to fend on their own. And if they have not been able to build a new family, they're homeless out in the streets. You know, I was so happy yesterday, and I hope his mouth is, is going to be his bond. The governor said this homeless situation is out of control. It's crazy. You could you look everywhere you're driving, wherever yes. there's a patch of like area, yeah. you always see all these tents. Yes. People pitching up anywhere and everywhere. It's yeah. like 
everywhere Standing you go. Standing on the side of the road doing a sponge bath with no clothes on. I'm, I cannot believe that in a person's right mind, they would do that. I think that there's some mental health issues. And I remember, I used to love, um, there was a place called Agnew, and it was a mental uh, health institution. And you could be driving down the road and you'd see people dancing out in the fields, you know, in their little uh, hospital gowns. But we didn't have no homelessness. We didn't have no issues of people not receiving the care that they all need. So I hope Governor is really going to look at this and see what it is he can do because it's, it's just horrible what's going on out there. Well, I think the reason why they're okay with, with like sponge bathing outside is because they get to a point, they're, they're they just, they don't care anymore. Yeah, they're done. This is their life. I mean, if they're not gonna do it outside, where are yeah. they gonna do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, if you live in that environment and you have nowhere to go, you just do it. Yeah. Right. It. You're not conscious like everyday people who's watching me, who's not watching right. me. You just do it because this is where you're living on the streets. You have to to survive. Yeah. So we will stay attuned to the new abortion pill because it's not a done deal. It's not easy, cut and dry, uh, where it, it it cannot affect the doctors and nurses. There's a lot of legal challenges of around it. this whole thing. So we're it. gonna do some more research and if you have any information or would like to chime in we would like you to comment below because we'd like yes. to know what your views are yes so in the bay area and i'm sure where you are there are um you know it's been really cold so our gas and heating fuel costs have started to tick up a little bit i think a lot of us are watching them and um going to hold companies like PG&E a little bit more accountable because you cannot come out with all these record profits and then turn around and drop the prices and then just start raising them just because. And that's what's going on. So we are definitely going to keep an eye on that because that affects so many California citizens across the board. So remember last week I told you about Rolling Stones and how they made this list. Well, they've been trying to backpedal a little bit because remember they left Celine Dion off the list. This is supposed to be the 200 greatest singers of all time. Everybody started taking exception to them saying that and then not putting great singers like Celine Dion. Could you imagine how that would just really touch her heart because she's under the weather right now, to know that she was being recognized for her beautiful voice. Not only did they leave Celine off, they left off Paul Simon, Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole? Kenny Rogers. Okay, yeah, I was like, oh, I was doing that too. Bobby Duran, Judy Garland. Okay, Liza Minnelli came from Judy Garland. Um, Jim Morrison. Wow. Julio Legas Iglesias. Iglesias. Jennifer Hudson. Did you, now, just listening to those names, but yet they put one of the uh, singers with BTS on one the list. One of the singers on BTS. And I was going through the list. I went through like two, mm. number 200, 199. Right. Like, I didn't even know who like most of these people were. Never even heard of them. Yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. So you know, Whoopi on the View, she was the one. She was like, "How can you leave Celine off?" And Nat King Cole, Nat King Cole created oh my Natalie, Natalie Cole. Natalie Cole, he was a. I mean, and oh, their unforgettable duet that she. The created. duet was just. Remarkable. It was unforgettable. Yeah. It really was. Yes. It's, and then the classifications, like Luther Vandross was in the 30s. It's like, I mean, I like Mariah Carey. She's number five. But if I, I'm not kidding. If there was a concert to go see Mariah or to go see Luther, I'm going to go see Luther. Luther used to put on a Vegas style show, his concerts. The last one I saw, he was at Shoreline. And he had steps that as he stepped on them, they lit up. I mean, his show was phenomenal. When he was young, I remember he did a concert and he sung and in the audience was 
was Dion Warwick and these other people and yes. it was like brought tears to my eyes watching yes. him Luther yes was amazing yes. he really was he was like a natural yes so I think there's going to be more about this because they want now people are like well who who picked these who are the people yeah who, yeah we want yes. to know if you know comment below yes because I don't understand why some of the people were in there that I'd never heard of and you know like Whoopi she's like we're well our greatest of all time for the 50s greatest of all time for the 60s greatest of all times for the 70s, right. 80s, 90s. They should have if, done that. Yes, that would have been great. Yes, but to lump them all together didn't go across really well. Yeah. So we'll keep you attuned to that. So on Sunday during the Buffalo Bills game, the team got a surprise because DeMar Hamlin was awake, breathing on his own, and they put him up on Zoom on the screen. And I mean, his boys went crazy. They were so oh, excited. Gosh. And he was just like, when, when, when? And because when, they, when he woke up and he became conscious after they got him to the hospital, the first thing he wanted to know was, did we win? So that game was suspended. However, they did win. First um, kick return all the way for a touchdown. So it was a great day. So happy to hear. Yes, so great. and it's so wonderful that he's feeling better. And um, it's really crazy though, because the circumstances that caused the attack, there's nothing physically resembling what caused it in his body. So they're gonna be performing tests because I know Damar, Damar is like, I'm ready to hit the field. And, <laughs> no, you know, you're like, not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Maybe next year, but they have to figure it out because they don't want him to go back to football. He does one tackle and then we have an instant repeat that that would not be good. That would not, he's gonna be out for a while. Yes, at least till next season. So how's the weather where you are? That's my question. Comment below. Let us know what you're going through. Here in Northern California and Southern California, we're going through rain. Rain, 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 rain. Yesterday, we had hail. We had thunder. We had lightning. I didn't hear the lightning. I didn't have any hail where I was. I was yeah. in Campbell. Uh, it was raining, but it wasn't as bad as they said it would be. And it's really weird because they're predicting these things as not happening or things are not, and it is happening. Right. So it's well, all over the board. I don't think they can like really, you know, put their finger right, on it. Right. You know, I think they're guessing at best. The thing for me is I got up yesterday. I was all excited to get out of the house. You know, it wasn't raining. And so I went to open the door and there was just a sheet of water. <laughs> I thought, wow. And it rained hard consistently for about an hour and 10 minutes. Wow. So I was just kind of stuck. We we're having power outages. Everywhere. Uh, I mean, people are, uh, we know some people that they, it took them 28 hours to get their power back on. Wow. So there's a lot of that going on. So they're calling this an atmospheric river. So what that means is that when it starts to rain, because it can't saturate into the soil, it starts to run and it runs like a river. There are places in the Bay Area that two weeks ago were dry and now they have rolling, running water. Uh, up in Northern California near um, Sonoma, they, it's getting to the point that people are afraid to drive across bridges because you could start to go across the bridge and it just collapsed. Because it, it's not, we're not, um, it's not accustomed to having so much, much saturated more. water. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's been a while. And also like in Santa Cruz, yes. all the, um, Mud the mudslides actually and thing, and trees because yeah. they're so saturated with water that they can't hold and they're just breaking off. And the other thing, Pacifica. Did you yes. see Pacifica? Yes. They were saying that uh, the houses that thought that they were far away from the ocean, they're actually the the soil, the, yes. the underneath, the, the, the foundation is yeah. just just like too yeah. soft and cracking, and yeah, the just houses crumbling, are, and the houses yeah. are, are leaning. Now there are some places in Pacifica where you know um, they got a lot of the rain and aptos, and they got the mudslides. But by the grace of God, their homes are above their garage. The garages are flooded. 
um, we with the power. Okay, so we got all this wind. So the wind took out some of the power lines, and the power lines fell on the garage. There were people stuck in their cars because I don't know why people do this. If you look <laughs> and you see standing water, just turn around. Right. No, they're like I can make it, and so they would get. They're trying to get in there. Yeah, and then they would get in the middle of it. Their vehicle stall, and then you see people like trying to get like a. Uh, something out to pedal their vehicle. Or there are people that are nearly dying yes. because their, their car just goes under yes. and they have to be rescued. But if they're unlucky enough, they will go under. No one will know their car's even there. Thank you. That's how much water is higher than the top of a vehicle. So if you see standing water, just stop and turn around. Now, what they're saying is that in Los Angeles, for example, they said about 20 to 35 billion, with a B, gallons of water is gonna be rustling through all this rain. Montesino, Montesino is where Oprah lives, Ellen lives. You know, uh, Ashton Kircher and um, uh, Mila Kumas. Kunis. Kunis. So they, I mean, we're talking really high-end people. They are just, I mean, they evacuated 10,000 people wow. uh, out of the area because of just the rolling water. So we've got all this water. The sad thing is that it's going to go into the Los Angeles River and back out to the ocean. So in one extent, it will raise the ocean level, but it's not going to do anything for the drought numbers. However, in Tahoe, they did a check of the snowpack yesterday. And right now, we're at 200% of normal. Mm. So that means we will have a little bit of a relief as we go into the next, you know, summer. We might actually be able to keep our, our lawns green for a little bit. The other thing that I found, which is very interesting, there are companies that own water rights in California. So I was talking to someone and they have they live in a one bedroom apartment and they were talking about how their water bill is killing them and i'm like they said well it used to be 45 dollars and now it's 70. and you know as we drive around you see a lot of you know fresh grass at these companies with big old lease signs right, right so why are you watering the grass when nobody's in the building yet we can't water the grass or take a shower they don't want us taking showers every day anymore or take a, a, a two-minute shower, like put the timer on and jump in, suds up, rinse off. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. So while we are a little concerned about the volume of water, we're not complaining because we would prefer water to drought. Yeah, we really, really need it. Yes, and we're getting a lot of it. We're supposed to be in a level two today, supposed to ease up a little bit tomorrow, and then... Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're supposed to have rain, continuous rain. So just be careful. Make really good conscious decisions. Don't, don't go out if you don't have to. Just say you're going to and don't. So a lot of people in all of our airports, domestic-wise, got a little surprise this morning. The Federal Aviation Administration issued an order grounding all domestic flights due to a computer outage. It wasn't like it was something they could, you know, predict. It's just something that happened. And the, it's gonna be investigated by the transportation uh, department. The thing for me is I would prefer them to shut it down and make sure I'm safe than for me to make my flight. You would not believe how many people were upset that they had the nerve to cancel a flight that they had scheduled. Safety first, people, safety first. Yeah, it's amazing how many people are just, they just, you better take a step back and look at the whole picture before you complain, because I would, like Gloria said, I'd rather than shut that down, be safe, then try and get on a plane and then, and then something happened. Yeah, it's horrible. AGT started its new season with all stars. Yeah. This is going to be very hard because these, everybody's good. All star. It's well, an all-star. It's all-star. 
Yeah, some people are good. So <laughs> the Bella sisters, the contortionists, where they... Yeah, I thought they were only okay. Yeah, I mean, for a, a million dollars. But I thought for them to bend and twist their... I mean... But then, but the thing is, with them, I've seen other shows on like Cirque du Soleil that right. do that. Like strength-wise, right. they've been performing the same thing. I mean, it's amazing what they can do to yes. bend their bodies that way. Yes. But I just find that it's just like... Okay, let's do this act, this one move. It's wow, and then we'll right. get down, and then we'll do another move. I yeah. just found it a bit slow going. It wasn't yeah. really a wow factor. Well, they I've were seen the opening too... act, so right. I think that's why everybody was just so Because I've seen too many acts like that in yeah. different variety shows and Cirque du Soleil shows. Yeah. So we don't know how long they're going to stand. Um, there was a young girl, Kelly Bivier. Uh, she had ovarian cancer Right. Uh, when she you know, did her first performance. And she was singing, um, I Will Survive. And uh, this time she wrote and sang her own song. So I thought that was unique and that's different. Right, right. Um, there's this guy, uh, Loans, is L-I-O-Z, Loans. So he's the weird guy who, you know, like he, he, he did the thing with Heidi with the bra. Oh, I mean, he, I, 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 and, yeah. and Simon gave him the buzzer. I would have given him the buzzer too. Yeah, I, I, mean, I thought like, that was a bit. How did, I mean, they're like, well, he's a Vegas act, and I'm like, they must be drunk, because I did not get it. Yeah, I didn't get that. That was just weird. It was, yeah. Yes. I don't know why. It's an all star show, so yeah, don't know about that. And then Jackie Formier, she was the Canadian singer that won um, Canadian Got Talent, and she has a beautiful voice. More importantly, she is a person that comes out and takes care of people at the end of their life. Oh, so okay. I thought that was really, really beautiful. Uh, Terry gave the Detroit Youth Choir the golden buzzer. He always gives the golden buzzer to choirs. Yes. What is up with that, Terry? You know, he said that, you know, they just touched his heart. And I was like, I mean, I, I just... And it wasn't his night, I don't think. It was his night. I mean, I thought he had time, but... Yeah, I thought that, that every episode was one person. Yes. Only one per Each person had a turn to give the golden buzzer. Right, but he, he did his, and I was like, okay. Um, there was a beautiful little ballerina. Her name is Victoria Puyana. And she has no arms. She would do these moves and the pirouettes... And I mean, you need the momentum of your arms normally to force you into certain positions. I I was just, now to me, that was a golden buzzer moment. Yeah, that was, yes. I mean, that was something I had never seen before. But, you know, we're, we're just novice. And the other thing that touched me, his name is Anishawa Kundachala. That's the young man. That's, yes, the young boy that... Yes. Uh, He's from England, and he is a conservationist. Mm -hmm. And his goal is to inspire kids to save the planet. Yes. And he didn't do any kind of singing, no acting, no, um, what is it, magician, right. anything like that. Right. He actually stood up there. Yeah. And With his did, little backpack. He had a, that was amazing. He had a little backpack on, like he was going exploring around the world. Yeah. He was so eloquent the way he put it. And he actually spoke about the land, the world, the globe, and how we need to save our world. Yes. And everybody, this little boy is going to be famous. I'm yes. telling you, yes. I have never seen anyone come on stage and be as well-spoken as yes. he is and he said that he was actually given the golden child prodigy award yes and he had a documentary that was made after he um debuted in the britain's got talent he did a documentary called six ways to save the planet yes. and i'm going to actually look for that documentary because i want to watch it because yes and everyone look for it yes. because you can all learn a lot from him yes. because why are we talking about gloria and i we always talk about global warming yes. things happening in our in our areas yes. the floods yes. the fires yes. the snow and everyone the rains. is saying i mean no matter where the the people are experiencing weather right now they've never seen rain come down that fast that long they've never seen i mean everything we're experiencing right now people who've lived in communities 30 40 50 years have never seen what's going on yeah 
So watch out for him, everyone. Yes, he's going to be really, really golden. And Terry Fader came back. Yes. And yes. I've forgotten because I've been to Vegas and I keep seeing him yeah. headline, like having his own show. And I'm right. like, oh, I want to see. And, and I've forgotten how good he was because yes. he's a singer. He's yes. the singing ventriloquist. Yes. So I was pretty impressed. Yes. So that was really good. So we'll we'll keep watching it and, you know, we'll keep you in And tune. comment. Who do, who do you think? Yes. Who do you think is going to go? Who do you like? Who are your favorites? Yes. As we always try and tell you, COVID is still out there. There are lots of people that uh, I'm hearing all the time that are going between, I had the flu and now I got COVID, or I had COVID and now I got the flu. There's lots of things going around. I'm out in public. It amazes me how many people are coughing and sneezing, no mask. They don't even try and cover. They just well, they like, put ah! it in their hand, cough in their hands, and then yes. their hands are touching everything under the sun. Yeah. So just... For your own personal benefit, be careful, take care of yourself. You know, the numbers are definitely out there. It's cold and you know, all the sporting events. Every time I watch a football game, I just go, oh my God, look at all the droplets. And I'm like, okay, keep everybody safe. So that's what we want and that's what we wish for you all because we feel the love in this room. You know, we're so grateful for you giving us the opportunity to talk to you and to share our little opinions about life. We feel the love. We send it out to you. Yes. We hope you all feel it. We hope you'll come back. Please, you know, let us know what you like, what else we can do. Because we have long lists and we peril it down and we're trying to do shorter videos. It's just not in us. We just got so much we to say. We have so much to talk so about to and say. we just love chatting away. Yes, we do. Because it's all about our likes, loves and everything that's yes. happening in the social world today. Yes, yes. And you know, well, next week, one of the things that I want us to start looking at and talking about is how can we, I heard there's a new app that kids are using and it's called gas or something like that and it's where they are complimenting each other where they can get in and send a compliment to someone the person doesn't know where it comes from they just get a compliment we will so, be i'll be doing my research yeah. on that so if our children are looking for more sweet kind loving ways why can't we as adults yes do the same thing exactly exactly thank you everyone for joining us for our chat today we hope you enjoyed it and whatever you'd like feedback comments please put it in the description below we love you so much and don't forget to hit the thumb icon please consider subscribing don't consider subscribe, subscribe yes and hit the bell notification peace peace peace, peace, peace. peace. <laughs> and thank you so much we are silicon valley girls chat over tea with our teas yes and, and remember, remember to always keep smiling. Bye-bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye.